one. <laughs> I think that's it. There he is. <laughs> you guys ready? Let's pull it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Hey! And JB's on there! Yeah. 600! 600! Yeah. Yes! Yay! Yeah. 600 mile time. That would be just so here we are, back with the real supercharger. Okay, we are on the test track. They'd recommend uh, putting your head on the headrest. Okay. <laughs> there he's ready. Nope. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> oh, that never gets old either. We have the first three production cars here. Yeah, you watch it. Well, why is he gonna throw it? I don't know, but we're gonna watch it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. I'm Eric, otherwise known as Derek, here in Shanghai at Gigafactory 3. Ballapalooza. It's like tricks. Generic cornflakes. Whoa! <laughs> it's raining cornflakes! Oh. This is trippy. Look, there's nothing here. Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I don't think your mic is working. I think we have a bum mic. We do not have a mic. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully the battery's not over here. Welcome everybody. It is November 8th. Um, great seeing everybody in chat so far. Welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we're going to figure out this battery issue real quick. Here, why don't you come up here for a second while I grab other batteries. And he'll chat for a second while I fix this. Of course, we didn't see it until right when we went live. It's like, oh. Okay, but anyways, we are here again. Oh. We got batteries. On our regular, uh, you know, weekly Tesla update, we're going to start off with some news. And then we'll just open it up to questions and chat and, and just hang out with you guys. Uh, today, as, as you saw in the... Uh, 
the uh, oh there I should be working now so I'll yes. get away from that one. yeah okay. yeah it's green so okay back in our normal seats welcome 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 <laughs> um, okay so where was I um, what a week it's been we'll get into that a little bit later in uh, the video um, but we're gonna go ahead and start with the news obviously biggest thing Tesla again, related Tesla related I was super excited about it is Tesla Kila. Tesla tequila, yeah. So Elon's tweeted about this for years, and yeah. maybe, maybe as a joke, and then he kept saying it was really coming, and it finally showed up on the website. What was it, like Thursday or so? Maybe yeah. Friday? Um, it was, uh, let me see here real quick. Someday last week it showed up. I thought they were sold out, but it's still on the website? <clears throat> um, so technically it's sold out, but I actually know the website. So if you go straight to Tesla, so here, let me do this. Well, we'll be down here for a minute. Uh, if you go straight to uh, Shop Tesla, you can actually see it on there. And it used to be when you click this to buy it, it would reroute you to this to be able to buy it. But it is already sold out. It's already sold. Sold out. But um, super excited. Got some bottles, but the uh, website was broken. It so, says yeah. it ships to Colorado. No zip code in Colorado would work. So... Um, I had it shipped uh, one bottle to, or, yeah, one to Texas, some to Nevada. Nevada. I don't know what the issue was. It says it ships to Colorado, but it wasn't working. Mm. I emailed them, haven't heard back yet, but I didn't want to risk it, so I had it shipped to uh, some friends and we, everything. We heard that some people in other states were having the same issue, same problem. I think it was what, Maryland. Their state was listed as being valid, but whenever they tried to submit an order, it wouldn't work. Eh, so definitely a problem with their database. It's just not validating their state properly, or you know they don't have that on the list of whitelisted states. So unfortunate for those people in those states. Exactly. I would be very bummed. So I made sure I secured bottles, bottles secured. Oh, you should have done te tequila. Te tequila secured. secured. Yeah, there we go. Um, but a little bit of backstory on this. I actually got some sweet, like, photos of what's going on. Um, let me find those just real quick. So here is the bottle. Actually half full. Love it. Is it half empty or half full? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I guess it depends how we want to <laughs> view it as. Um, but then this is what the front of the box is going to look like. Wow. This is the cap removal instructions. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, you do not want to pull it to the left or to the right. It needs to be straight up. Otherwise, you're liable to break the glass. Oh, wow. And here's the actual packing. It's in foam and shipping like that and all that. It looks like you got to remember to stick it back in the stand whenever yes. you're setting it down. So you don't want to have too much tequila uh, so that you're unable to properly open and close it and replace it in the stand. Good point. Um, but I guess the Nostros or whoever is uh, doing this with Tesla actually makes several different kinds of tequila. And someone was like, oh, it's going to cost you $45 to refill the bottle. Correction, um, that is one of their other grades of tequila from that company. But that is not the grade of tequila, which is supposedly the highest grade in these bottles. I don't know. We'll be the judge of that once we get a bottle. Uh, we will be cracking it open and uh, letting you guys know how it is. I'm super excited. On to the next I just, thing. I just like the look of the bottle. The bottle's dope. I agree. Um Hopefully the tequila is good. It was two hundred and fifty dollars a bottle, and I see someone in chat said they're going for over a thousand dollars on eBay right good now. Good way to to get some uh, funding for the fourth quarter, you know, uh, revenue. There so. you go. <laughs> but I heard someone was. There's a lot of talk on Twitter, and um, the actual designer for Tesla. Uh, he designs all kinds of stuff. Um, he actually chimed in and said that the glass bottle is what took so long. Um, they approached a bunch of glass manufacturers, glass blowers, and all of them said it was basically impossible. Obviously, nothing's impossible if you throw enough money and time at it. Yep. Um, so they got it done. Um, super excited. I don't know if it's going to come back, though. I've been getting a ton of messages from people asking, when is it going to be back up for sale? I don't know. It may never. We just don't know right yeah, now. Because we've seen other things in the past, like the, the, uh, the surfboard. And if, and uh, the uh, not a flamethrower, you know, stuff just shows up. And <clears throat> yeah. Kinda, well, that was actually a boring company product, but yeah, the surfboard was a Tesla surfboard. So 
Yeah, and those are now going for like 10 grand. Pretty rare. Um, I have one just sitting out there. So this is one of those things, You might, if you do buy it, you might just want to keep it on the shelf and as a kind of collector's item. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing now the bottles on eBay have to be sold empty because eBay does not uh, allow yes. alcohol yep, sales. Exactly. So imagine that, paying $500 for an empty bottle. But the thing is, can they empty it and then put the tequila in a... Unfortunately, the tequila that comes mm. in the bottle is not sold by that company separately. Yeah. At least not yet. I know, but yeah, and also the problem is is you can't really ship that. If you're a private individual, you, you're not yeah. legally allowed to ship stuff like that. It's a little easier with maybe a surfboard or something. But anyways, Tesla took it, yeah. Yep, and I see someone saying, uh, and the short shorts, yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. Um, I saved this for live stream. I thought about making this a video, and then I was like, nah, that's kind of... I don't think that would be a super entertaining video. But these are the short shorts. They uh, fancy came, and we're going to open them on stream. So here we go. I haven't even opened this. Looks like a pretty fancy box. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No. Oh, and show the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Short here we go. shorts. Yeah. Short shorts. I wonder how many people are going to get those under the Christmas tree this year. <laughs> um, here we go. Here we go. Are we ready for this? this the, I think this is the first live unboxing we've done. Yes, I believe so. Okay, everybody, here we go. You can go a little faster. Oh, wow, that was anticlimactic. I'm sorry for that. Oh, there's still um, another. We got... Oh, we ripped the paper. Mm. I know. Do you want to help? Do you want to help? <laughs> Take that. Grab she it. Probably likes, yeah, she likes to lick things. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, here we go. Back to the paper. Very nicely wrapped. Yep. Very, um... Very sexy, shall I say. What size are those? Those look big. <laughs> Medium. Okay. Did I, I thought I ordered small. I don't yeah. remember. I thought I ordered small. I'll have to look away. Anyway, um, there you go. Live unboxing of the short shorts. Uh, okay. I wanted to do that on live stream for you guys because I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, let's see. Next up. So uh, other Tesla news. Uh, Tesla has partnered with Honda for emissions credits, which is kind of interesting. Now, every year, Tesla, actually all manufacturers can get the emissions credit if they actually are able to. But Tesla obviously doesn't need it because they don't sell any gas cars. So they're able to sell those credits to other car manufacturers to help lower their group emissions. I don't really agree with it. Yeah, because it seems bad because you're, exactly. you're not really lowering it overall. You're just kind of you're kind of like moving things around like the shell game. And exactly. So it, do, it is a way that Tesla can make money, but it kind of is a it, it allows the other company to kind of cheat or not improve their fuel economy or make their own electric cars. So yeah, they've teamed up with Honda in Europe, kind of like they've done with Fiat and some other companies. Yep. And it just like Eric says, it allows them to sell those emissions credits and and allows you know kind of Honda to improve their you know. Their numbers. Yeah. yeah. And, and make it legal for them to sell all their cars. I don't necessarily agree with it, but what does this mean? A ton of money for Tesla. Because they can That's sell those yeah. either to like the highest bidder or somebody they really want to work with. Um, so that is actually awesome for Tesla from that standpoint. Because they do get a lot of money from this. Like millions. It, it's a lot. So um, always love to see something like that. Uh, now... Earlier this week, we actually did some polls on Twitter. And if you helped out with those, I really appreciate yeah, totally it. Totally unrelated. Uh, totally <laughs> unrelated. But next up on the news, because we talked about the whole idea. Oh, it went from my chat. Did you remove it? Yeah, it's down below. But basically, oh. basically, uh, we it had talked about chat. in the past when we had an older model S 100D, which came with MCU one, but Tesla started offering the infotainment upgrade to MCU two. But as part of that twenty five hundred dollar upgrade, it no longer included the F AM, FM, or XM radio. A lot of people complained about that, and Tesla heard and they responded, and they came out with an FM and XM radio upgrade. It's a digital tuner card that they can install in the car, but that's going to cost about $500 in the United yep. States. And that's kind of a lot for just radio functionality. And definitely I, I use the radio, especially when tra traveling, you know, out of cell phone signal. But, you know, I haven't been using the radio that much. So we thought we'd put it up to our viewers and say, should we get that radio tuner upgrade? And the verdict was no. But at least like 70, almost like 100 of you voted I like turtles. Yeah. So, they so were, maybe they're on the... on the. I know. give you that. I like turtles too. So maybe actually what we'll do, we'll take that money 
and we'll donate it to some turtle conservation. Oh, yeah. That's because people like turtles. So there you go. Yeah. Rather than blow it on a radio that we probably wouldn't use much, we'll just donate and it. And again, I would probably use the radio, but we don't know if we are upgrading to the Plaid Monolith yep. next year. They wouldn't really make that much money to spend $500 on just, you know, basically an FM tuner for this car. There's cheaper ways we can do that. Maybe we'll do that in a future video. But, you know, I used to listen to the radio, talk radio every day on the way to work. But since I work from home now, don't really need a radio. So... Verdict is in. We will not be getting that upgrade. But we will be donating to some conservation fund. Hopefully to do with turtles, because I think that's a great idea. Just thought of it. Awesome. Love it. Um, so next up, uh, there's some news. So it, all the Teslas have gotten a pretty nice EPA bump over the years uh, for uh, their miles that you can drive or kilometers, wherever you are located. And the nice thing with this is with those ratings going up, you get more range. But the downside is, is sometimes you can lose some features. And that's what has been noticed recently. Um, most Teslas, if you have purchased one. Uh, Very recently. I, I think probably like June or earlier, you wouldn't have this. Yeah, I think it started in like June. Because we don't have it on either of the Model Ys that <laughs> right. we picked up delivery, took delivery of this year. But new cars, they no longer have that regen option where you can go between low and standard. It's all, it's just, I believe, there, there's not even yeah. There's just not even an option there. Exactly. So it's so, been removed from the software. Mm -hmm. And we we're trying to figure out what, why it's been removed. But it sounds like what they've probably done is that their you know EPA fuel economy ratings are based upon that. And if they have yep. another mode which lowers that, then <clears throat> regen isn't as efficient. And so the mileage would actually be less. So those ranges we were seeing previously would have been a, a slightly lower number. So by eliminating that low uh, regen setting, it uh, let, basically it always uses the stronger version of regen, and that can lead to a longer range, and that helps bump up the EPA range. Right, so all in all, it's a positive. Now, it has not disappeared from our cars. Now, older, that's one thing. It seems exactly. to only be on newer vehicles, so I think th they're probably wanting to avoid people complaining and saying, I bought the car, it had this feature, you took it away. Yeah. So by only doing it on new cars that are being delivered, you can't complain about that because it was not on the car when you when you picked it up. Yep. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. It, From the best I can understand from Tesla, they will not be removing that from previous cars. But if you do buy a new car and you are used to that, keep that in mind. You will no longer have access to be able to change that, which could kind of be a bummer because it was kind of nice to use low regen if it was really slippery um, or stuff like that. Um, but yeah. at the same point, there's other ways to do that too. You we, can put it in yeah. chill mode. Basically, yeah, we like kind that. of had like our own little like winter mode that we would use here in Colorado. Sometimes if it was really snowy or icy out, we'd have a different profile, which was a copy of our usual driver profile, but we'd have it set to go down to like chill mode and maybe also have that low regen. So maybe this is a hint though. Maybe Tesla will finally be coming out with a winter driving mode. That would be something that would be nice to have. That would be really awesome if they did that. Uh, it's a great time to do it because here we are getting ready to go right into winter. Yeah, speaking of winter, I, Tesla now, if you pull up uh, the Tesla Model Y, now has a winter tire package available. Oh, yeah. And yes, that's something yeah. that a lot of people were asking about because they were taking delivery back in you know, September, October, and it's getting into winter in a lot of places in, in the country or in the world. And Tesla now comes out with a 19 inch Gemini based wheel with a winter tires. And see, they are using these Soto Zero tires. And so what I'm actually doing. Yeah, so that's what Tesla can get in, what, $3,500 from Tesla for that set, right? Yeah, and so what I'm actually, are they 19? Yeah, they're 19s. So I'm actually doing, I think, yeah, I am doing 19s from uh, yep. T-Sport line. And I'm actually going with this. And I'll okay. be rocking this on my Model Y. Um, with the... Uh... Oh, they have some different tire options oh, okay, now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. A few more than what... Um, mm -hmm. So the Continental Vikings now... Well, we should look and see, because they haven't received yours yet. Maybe you yeah. can change your order. Um, but these are at 3400 Oh, so um, that's just slightly less than yep. the... Oh, okay. Yep, and so that's what we'll be going. I thought originally they had the Soto Zeros. Maybe they no longer have oh. those, but they have the Viking Contact. I'll have to check those tires out. Yeah, we'll have to see, because yeah. we placed an order for those, but I think they're not expected for, like, uh, uh, the end of this month. November. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to look and see which tires we'll be getting with those. But a couple options out there. Yeah, definitely. So now that Tesla's offering their own, though, that's even great to see, because now you can make sure you can get those same tires from them if that is what you want. 
Um, next up, so some big news, some giant news in Australia. Uh, new giant battery. Um, so let me pull this up here. Yeah, basically, a couple of years ago, Tesla built this you know, giant battery uh, I don't know, battery farm, something like that. But basically, a huge thing in Australia. They they bet that they could build it in less than 100 days, and they actually did it in like 60 days. Well, that, and it's been in, amazingly successful and it's really saved them a lot saved the energy company and consumers there in australia a ton of money and they liked it so much that now they have ordered another one and the new one's going to be like 300 megawatts and yep. it's more than double the size of the previous one and it's going to be located located close to melbourne in australia and it's they definitely are seeing down there that these are really viable and you don't need to have like a coal peaker plant that needs to be turned on you can totally handle that totally with batteries and so we're going to see that i think around the world because i think they're building them in the united states and other countries as well yeah and the cool thing is is right here um over the past two years it has saved south australia more than a hundred million dollars in network costs wow yeah that's a lot of money because and that's one thing that people have brought up on like the last uh, i think earnings call uh they were asking us like yeah you sold this should you have charged more for that? Because it is yeah. saving them so much money. Could they have? Could Tesla have charged more? So it'd be interesting to see what the price is on this one compared to the last one, and see if Tesla did maybe bump the price up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, there's a double-edged sword to you that. You don't want to do it too much to scare them away. But e- exactly, because obviously they sold it at a price where they were able to make profit. They wouldn't have shot themselves in the foot, I don't think, on that one. Um, but the more that people see how well this can actually pay off and do good. I think more it, yeah, it's going to take off around gonna, the world. Exactly. And again, you could be able to eliminate even more of those coal peaker plants and stuff and natural gas plants. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll be really awesome to see that. Um, next up, we have a Tesla semi update. It's a quick one though. Uh, basically pride group enterprises uh, added or they increased their options. Basically, Sorry. They, they decided to do a deal with Tesla yep. for the Tesla Semi, and they initially ordered 150 semis with the option to increase that order to 500 semis. And this company, Pride wow. Group Enterprises, basically leases those out, and they, they definitely recognize the efficiencies and the cost savings of these semis, and that's why they're going to be buying them and leasing them out. And they're, they're you know, I can understand them being a little cautious, only getting 150 initially, but it's nice they did lock in that they can do that option for up to 500 of them at a later date. So this is the largest, again, largest order of Tesla Semi so far. Still haven't seen any actually produced and delivered, but it's nice to see that Tesla is still racking up all these orders for the Semi. Yep. So once they do get the factory up and going, they're going to, you know, be busy producing those for, you know, probably at capacity as long as possible. And yeah. Definitely. I mean, everyone's super excited for the semi here in the U.S. Actually, kind of worldwide. And so that's honest. hopefully so. that's coming sometime next year because I believe yep. they're going to be building those down in Austin at the new Gigafactory there. Yeah. Um, Scotty, I, I was actually looking through emails this morning, and uh, I will get back to you a little later about the solar. Oh yeah, with his um, rack system. Yeah. We t- yeah. yeah. Um, so next up. So Tesla China in Shanghai has just been going crazy. We've seen it from the earnings call letters and everything like that. Super excited to see where this is going. They're now exporting a Model 3s. I think I read somewhere they're producing like 800 a day. Absolutely mind boggling. Uh, But approval for Model Y in China is going through right now. So the launch must be imminent. And our friend out uh, Jay in Shanghai reposted this on Twitter. But basically, here are the docks in Shanghai at Tesla, and that is a Model Y with camo wrap on it. Hmm. So, could this be one of the first Model Ys ever built in Shanghai? Could be. I I would say it's pretty likely. Um, But it's weird, because Tesla doesn't camo their cars. At least not in the United States. They never like, have really before. I've seen a couple, though, in and they were both in China whenever they it, do it. Exactly. So maybe it's a little more common there. Exactly. I mean, we or see- are there some body changes? Oh, it's possible. To make it kind of more China-specific, and they've been going through that. So I'm not really sure. But the fact that we're seeing one there, um, the launch is definitely around the corner, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, I would love to go back out there as soon as... We are able to. Um, but for now, I will just have to live through that. So Jay in Shanghai, if you are watching, please keep uh, retweeting and 
posting yeah. some awesome photos. We've, we've met Jay a few times, so it's nice. To, yeah, yeah, he's he's really photos. helped us out a lot, so uh, really appreciate that. So we got a bunch of uh, other like software, firmware. Uh, things to talk about in the news. One is that, uh, you know, as you might have seen, they came out with the full self-driving beta. They released it in the United States. Few locations, few select drivers. It's not everywhere yet. And they've been uh, releasing a couple of updates to that, adding, you know, tweaking the features, but it's doing amazingly well. It's not perfect, but it's amazing what they've come up with that in that full self-driving beta. Pretty wild to see what videos have popped up. So it's doing so well that now Elon tweeted the other day that they're going to be expanding it to other countries and they're going to be sending it to Canada and Norway as well. And those, those are probably the two other countries that Tesla is the most popular in. Yes. And so I can definitely see them that way they can get it on different roads and in different uh, traffic signs and rules of the roads. So it's cool to see that they are already releasing that to other countries. Another uh, firmware update that we saw recently is that it's not a huge one, but we saw that in the Model 3 on 2020.40.8 they now have the ability to show the non-aero cap wheels. So a lot of people who get the like base Model 3 have the aero wheels and if they don't like the look you can pull those covers off and you can actually just see the metal covers, the metal wheel itself. And now they actually have the option in the software so you can change your avatar and select that just so that it, in the car and on their phone app it will match what your car really looks like. And we did check on our Model Y, we checked on both the S and the Y that we have in the garage, and the 3 has it, but even though the Y is on a newer model, we're on 2020.44.10.1, which just came out this week, they don't have that option yet. We only have like three wheel choices there for the Y. So it's something that we're still waiting on, but we don't have those wheels anyway, so it doesn't really affect us. Yeah. But uh, definitely I'm sure some people who have those Gemini wheels on the Y will be looking forward to that. So another thing, just with, from where it's not really out yet, but we heard that some people have been looking at the code and they saw, they can see a hint in the code that looks like Tesla's getting ready to add 5G support and maybe even Wi-Fi uh, hotspot functionality. And that's something people have been asking for. I wouldn't really need it myself because I would just use my phone for a Wi-Fi hotspot, but I can definitely see some customers would be interested in that. Yeah, especially, I mean, a lot of people have kind of compared it to other car manufacturers that do have that and say, like, for their kids in the car and everything, it would be helpful. My attitude is I would probably just turn it on my phone. Yeah, I've done that a few times uh, for other people. But it is looking like it's going to be offered. Now, will it be an extra subscription? That'll be interesting to see you over above the premium connectivity charge. Exactly. And will it be yeah. a charge for even people who are locked in with that free lifetime premium connectivity? Will they now be charging if you get that uh, higher level 5G with Wi-Fi hotspot? I definitely can see them charging for the Wi-Fi hotspot just because if they do it for free, I, I know probably people will probably yep. heavily, heavily use it. And if they do it as a hotspot, people might just use that at home. Yeah. In which case, it's going to cost Tesla a ton of money. So um, it will be interesting to see how that goes, but at least uh, it's coming and it's an option. Yeah. And people love options. So one, one big thing, so we did mention with our why we are at the 2020.44.10.1. I think you actually got a 2020.44.10 before that, but uh, that's a new software that came out last week. It adds a bunch of features. A lot of them are like media related. One of them is like uh, percentage speed offset. So instead of having a fixed speed like 5 miles per hour or 10 miles per hour when you engage uh, TAC, it... You know, that would be fine if you're maybe at a highway speed, but if you're going down at like 25, 30 miles an hour, you, you might not want to be that high up. So they added a yeah. percentage speed option so that you can go like 5% or 10%. And so that way it's relative to your current speed and uh, you don't have probably fewer or lower worry about speeding uh, tickets and stuff like that. Another feature they have in, they've added this gapless Spotify playback and better Spotify integration. So for those of you who do have a Spotify account and are logged into it, it should be better functionality. And I have played around with that and confirm it is much more usable. I didn't really care for how it was before, and most of the time I would just do Bluetooth through my phone, but I have started using it, and it is definitely more user-friendly, for sure. Yeah. And another thing, they've added some media search improvements. So basically, when you do search, it will the search results will be listed into as to what input you're using. So it's a little easier to find what you're looking for. And also, they've changed it so you can actually hide or show some of the media sources. And one thing we did find, which was a little odd, that lists out all of the media sources, such as radio, if you have a radio, and Spotify, and TuneIn, and, and streaming. But um, you're only able to turn off two of them for some reason. And yeah. You, you think if they have toggle switches, they would allow you to toggle off 
all but one of them. But for some reason, you can only toggle off like two of the sources. But it should make it so that when you are searching, it will eliminate some values from some of those sources that you might never want to listen to. Exactly. I just wish it would allow me to do more than two because that's how we were playing around with it. I was like, oh, I never use this. I never use yeah, this. I never use. Back and oh, forth. You know, I was, can't do more odd. than two. It's just not what you would expect when you no. see all the radio buttons or check boxes, what not uh, sliders, whatever they're called. Toggles. Uh, yeah. yeah, toggles, and it's just not quite there. But uh, another thing uh, for those of you who have like a Raven Model S or X, they did some launch mode improvements, and also there's just a minor change with uh, uh, languages where if you. Uh, have you can have basically the display language different from what you used in the command language when you talk to the car. So that's just a nice feature, for, especially for those in, in other countries. Yep. Um, so I, I guess that's kind of it for most of the news. So we always like to finish up if, our yeah. news with a solar update. Um, so we actually have some, some good news. Oh, yeah. Excellent news. Excel finally came out to the house and replaced our pole. Yeah, and we'll do we'll be doing a in detail video yes, on that for maybe, sure. maybe this coming week. But basically we were waiting about six months for our transformer to be upgraded. Yeah. We finally got it upgraded. It was amazing when they did finally come out and they had all these crews out here and they were up Some on of my, which have been here previously. Yeah, it was cool. The guy that turned <laughs> our power off was the one that turned our power back on and connected our power to the grid like two years ago. So it was cool that that he's like, I remember here, I was here two years ago. So it was cool and it was neat to see when they had guys up on four different poles in our neighborhood yeah. all at once connecting things up they f we finally have a new transformer the only thing is is now that the weather is getting colder we won't know if it really fixed the problem until it gets hot again so it's nice we finally have it but we'll do a, a detailed video on that coming up but basically for our for regular solar video we did okay we had some days that were sunny some days that were uh, not so sunny this week i think we averaged about 67 or so kilowatt hours per day so we keep going down at our peak back in june we were like 145 but now that the days are shorter and the sun's lower in the sky and we have mountains to the southeast and to the southwest of us that kind of block the the sun when it's lower like that so our solar production has dropped down to a little bit less than half of what we were getting back in June. Still doing okay though. For <clears throat> most days we are covering our usage or getting pretty close to it. Some days we are uh, having a deficit, but as we've mentioned in the past, our electric company lets us roll over those credits of anything we produce in the summer can roll over and cover our bills in the fall and winter months. And so we still have like over 5,500 uh, kilowatt hour surplus, which will get us through the next few months. Yeah. And here you can kind of see how 2020 has been thus far. It uh, looks like March through October, we had no problem producing more. So hopefully that gets us through four yeah. months of uh, obviously winter time, shorter Cause, days. Because we're everything. still like breaking even, very close to breaking even in November. And we still got a yeah. lot of time left in November. December, definitely going to be colder, snowier, and shorter days. So we uh, probably have a deficit in those months where we're not going to be able to cover all of our usage via solar. But since we have all those credits, that should help us get into January, February. And back in March, we're going to be having a surplus again. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Todd Baker actually asked how many panels we have. Yeah, so we have like 63, I think it's 63 or 64 panels. I'd have to count it out. Uh, 51, yeah, 63 panels. So we have like 20.5 kilowatt system. We originally had 16.5 panels, uh, excuse me, 16.5 kilowatts with like 51 panels. And then about a year and a half later, we, when that wasn't enough to cover all of our usage, we added another four kilowatts and 12 panels to our system. And they're not the optimally located because they're kind of on the northwest part of our roof, but all of our southeast and south and east facing roof is already full. So we had to add that northwest. So it's not going to do as well those new panels in the winter but they helped out a lot in the spring and summer and fall months. Definitely. Uh, we actually have a few solar questions, so we'll get into that real quick. Uh, Lori is here. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Um, we miss your live stream during the week, but uh, we'll have to catch some of those again. Um, but um, real quick, Otis said that somebody used my referral for solar. It got installed last week, but I have not gotten my $400 it credit. It takes a while. <laughs> um, I'll be calling them to, um, tomorrow. I mean, I would wait. So... It takes Just, a while. You won't get it until after they get permission to operate, which can take 30 Month. days at or least more. probably yeah. to several months after it's installed. And then after that, I think they have 12 weeks uh, was the fine print I read last to actually mail you the check. So... It'll it'll be a while, Otis. Yeah, uh, sorry. There's, yeah, you, there's really nothing you need to do. You exactly. Can, you can contact them, but it's not going to speed the process up, 
process up any. We've had a couple solar referrals and we've gotten them and we've been notified. They'll tell us that, you know, uh, we can see in the app that they've been installed and we'll get a notification like an email saying that, okay, you, you know, your referral has been installed, but they're still going to process it. It's going to take like two to three months, maybe even longer before you get the check, but it should come. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily rush on that one because I bet you they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. Um, now, Paul, and I've seen this going around a lot, MKBHD just tweeted about it earlier. Uh, why was the Roadster removed from the Tesla site? Is the it, trick is, you gotta, it's not. Yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and switch to this so we can kind of walk you through it. So Tesla site, here we go. Um, they streamlined up here. So you have your S, your 3, your X, your Y, your solar roof, your solar panels. If you want to see Cybertruck or Roadster, any of that, it is still here. If you click on the three little bars and then you can see Cybertruck or Roadster. Now, if you're on a phone or anything, down at the bottom oh, where my face is, like right here, will be three little bars. And if you click on that or click on more, uh, depending on what browser you're on, Cybertruck and Roadster will then show up. Um, I understand, I saw Elon just tweeted, it was a mistake that it'll be back soon. But to be honest, Cybertruck and Roadster have so many reservations on, especially Cybertruck. I think Roadster, they still have some available um, for the Founders series. But neither one of those cars are currently being manufactured. Yeah. So in my eyes, there's no real reason you need to keep them front and center on the website and just keep it more streamlined into things that you currently have for plus, sale. Plus, I bet you could probably just Google, like, order Tesla Cybertruck, and that would probably take you straight to the page if you can't find it. I bet so. By using the menu there. Yeah, but, but don't worry. It is there. We promise. So one thing I saw, Scotty, when he was talking about solar, and he's the one I think was had yes, mentioned the, the ground-mounted system. Nice thing about those, I don't know if, Scotty, if you could tell us, are your ground-mounted panels ones that you can adjust? Because that's one thing, if you have ground-mounted panels, you can adjust the angle so they can do better in the winter than... You know, say, and, you know, you can adjust them depending on where the sun is up in the sky. The thing is, is Tesla solar or Tesla energy doesn't install ground mounted panels. They only stick to ones on roof. But it's cool if you do go with another company, they can offer those, especially if you have the lot. You have to have some more land to do that, but they can definitely be more efficient. Yeah. You can even get ones that automatically will follow the sun. That's going to cost more, but th that has even better uh, efficiency throughout the day. Yep. Year. And it sounds like Brian has a similar issue to what we had. He said, we expanded our solar system this summer. It was causing the main solar breaker to trip constantly, and yeah, we had high production yeah, days. Exactly. About like 16 us. kilowatt max output. Uh, it turned out it was a bad transformer on the mm -hmm. pole for us as well. Once they replaced it, it never tripped again. Yeah, it sounds Fingers really similar. crossed, very similar. really similar a problem. We started seeing it back in May when temperatures got to be about 80 degrees, and we would see it all throughout the summer up through, you know, September. Sometimes we were seeing these outages of like, you know, 30 or more outages per day. The power never actually went off in the house because we do have those power walls and we had never knew there was a problem, yeah. but our solar would keep shutting off because it would think that there was a problem with the grid. So we're crossing our fingers and hoping that that new transformer, the nice thing is we have that transformer, it's installed just for us, maybe the neighbor, but we were sharing a one transformer with like five other houses. So it's and nice. it was an old one. Yes, it, an old one. So now we've got a brand new one and it looks like it's just for like two houses. So we should hope that that fixes our problem. Fingers crossed. Yep. Um, now, see a couple other questions. Apple review it said, does supercharging cost money? Depending on the car. Depending on, yes, exactly. And, unfortunately, there's no easy answer. Um, older cars. Yeah, basically any car that was it free. Any Model S or X that was built before, like, or ordered before January 15th of 2017 had free supercharging when it was sold. Then later on in 2017, those S and Xs had still had free supercharging, but it, it was not transferable. If you had the older cars, you, whenever that car sold to the next owner, it would continue for the life of the car. Later in 2017, that supercharging only stayed with the original owners. So if you ever sold the car, it goes away. Uh, later cars like the Model 3 and the Model Y don't have free lifetime supercharging. You might be able to get a uh, referral credit and get like a thousand free miles, or sometimes you can get a certain like two years or three years of supercharging, but it's not gonna be lifetime like with the S or X. Yeah. Um, I see a super chat. Thank you, Mace. So, so much for the 20. Wow, that Thanks, scared Mace. the crap out of me. Um, I don't know why the alert hasn't come up yet. It should be like it's right here. It's a little here. delayed. It's a little delayed. Sorry about that. But thank you for the $25. There we go. Thank you so much for the $25 super chat. Really appreciate that. Said uh, big thanks to David for pointing me towards automating my power walls. 
Uh, been having smart things change settings twice a day, and now it works exactly like I want. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, Mace asked us, Mace asked us a couple weeks ago uh, how to do to change things because we were talking about Stormwatch and a few other features. And basically, the software for a Tesla app is good for some stuff, but it's missing some functionality. Yeah. It's not as flexible as you might like it to be. So a couple people have come up with their own software that you can run, uh, you know, on your own computers or. Uh, yeah, and you can use smart things and other devices that you can kind of tweak your power wall so that they change what mode they're operating in, or you can program them to turn Stormwatch on or off at different times of the day instead of them just being on, on or off. So it's so you're welcome, Mace. Glad I could help you out. Yeah, I still though think Tesla could do a lot more user adjustability yeah. in the app for the nice. power walls. And they are, they're always tweaking it and exactly. adding stuff. So, you know, like we complained a couple years, it was last year when we had a power outage and we had the cars plugged in and one of them kind of drained those power walls down. Yep. We tweeted to Elon and we said, hey, can you do something to have the cars talk with power walls? And he replied right away saying, yeah, great feature coming soon. And they rolled out that feature originally was for the 3 and the Model Y yep. and they eventually rolled it out to the S and the X. And now we don't have to worry about that. So you can basically set a reserve limit on your power walls. So if your car is charging and the power goes out overnight and you don't get a notification, the power walls will not be all drained by you charging your cars. They'll get to a certain percentage and then stop. That way you have enough power left over to hopefully power your house through that extended outage. Rather than put it all into your car. Yeah. Um, real quick, Pack a punch said cookies or brownies. Oh, it depends. Or brookies. What I was gonna brookies? say brookies yeah. to be honest, but it depends on the cookie. Yeah. I don't like crunchy cookies. I know this might not be the popular opinion. I like soft <laughs> we, cookies. We always do the soft baked. Yeah. Soft baked. We know cookies. exactly how long to cook cookies in our. I am the so. cookie king. I would say that we do do cookies more often than brownies, just because we buy in those giant tubs of cookies at Sam's Club and. Yeah. If they made it so I could buy the giant tub of brownie mix, that's a new. Yeah. Well, you can I would buy you that. You can buy instead. it. And you can add stuff. You can add it. But yeah, it's I don't not cook. As, that's a little bit more work than just scooping it out of the container. I'll do it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, probably brookies. Um, let's I see, see. I see somebody's asking about. I don't know where you're at, but somebody's asking about how yep. to change the Model Three cabin filters. So we did a video on that. I think you probably have a couple videos on that. Yep. Uh, one of them you did was just to how to change it yourself, but I think you did another one about how to put in the HEPA filters, yes. and that'll be for like either the three or the Y. Yep. I don't think we've done one on the S or X yet, but yeah, Eric's gonna look that video up and he'll drop it in the chat there and. Uh, I'm looking for it. The cool thing is you can add these filters. You can get them from Abstract Ocean, and, and uh, they're, they're not as big as the you know, bioweapon defense mode filters that you can get for the S or X, but they definitely add some improved functionality and make it so that the air is a lot cleaner coming in. In his video where Eric shows how to uninstall the old one, install the new one, he did some testing with, he had a sensor of some sort, and he would like, I lit, lit a match yeah. on the outside, and he would be in the car, and you could, you could like still smell it, and it could sense that smoke um, when we were using the old filters, and once you used the newer HEPA filters, there was no sign up. They worked really well. I actually just found the video. Um, I'm gonna drop that into chat real quick. Sorry, I wasn't manning the cameras. Um, let me drop that into chat. This is for the HEPA filters, but if you wanna change it with just regular filters, same process. Um, cool. By the way, I think I mispronounced it's Mace, right? Mace, I, I was, yes. I was saying more of the Z, a, a S instead of Z, but it's Mace. Mace. Uh, we've that. known Mace a long time. Yeah, we met him a couple, so, several years um, ago in California. Huge so. thanks to Mace for yeah. coming out and hanging out with us back then. Um, let's see, where was I? Da, 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 da. Um, Station 240 said, yeah, sometimes they have to replace transformers due to issues with not cooling down after hot days. And that's really when we noticed we saying, it. Exactly. And the issue was, though, there's five houses on that really old transformer. One of the houses has an indoor pool. And I know pool all that bumps, equipment yeah. can suck a lot of power real quick. Um, but just having so many houses on one transformer... Definitely had to have been it. Fingers crossed. Um, let's see. On said, I bought some EV mud flaps for my Model Y. Should I worry about a huge range hit? I don't know, but I've actually been looking for Model Y mud flaps, so maybe I will have to get it and test it out. Thank you for the heads up, because I was actually just thinking about that earlier. I, I filmed some videos today. I'm not going to lie. Couple, pretty yeah. proud of it. Um, thanks to everybody who watches the channel. I got a new camera and some new gear. Um, this is the stabilized camera. This is the new DJI. We got the Sony AS7 III. 
We've got, this is a 16 to 35 lens. I got a 40 millimeter, 80 millimeter, 10 to 18. I got all kinds of stuff. Um, so lots of videos coming. Yeah. And we get some super smooth. So just to follow now. up too, I saw Apple Review was asking about how much supercharging costs. It depends. Uh, it it de de depending on the state, the country you're in, it varies greatly. But typically, most of the time, it's less than what it would cost to charge a gas car. And uh, we again have free supercharging in a couple of our cars, and yep. we have the like pay per charge on the others. We but we have referral miles that usually cancel those out. But I, I think we've only paid a few dollars for supercharging in the last four years but for those that do have to pay for it again it depends on how empty your battery is how many kilowatt hours you're putting into it and also tesla has started doing time of use charging where in some places that were really busy and in expensive areas where the, like surge pricing or when they use a lot of kilowatts at once uh, that really bumps up the bill so tesla is trying to like disincentivize people to, to charge during those peak periods and so they might charge like 35 cents or, or more per kilowatt hour but it might be 15 cents at cheaper times of the day and uh, also we've seen that tesla has started doing kind of like cheaper charging like even on the weekends and stuff so it's trying to get people to charge at different times just so that it doesn't cost tesla as much to run those superchargers Exactly. And, and de again, depending on where you go, some states actually don't charge you by the kilowatt hour. They charge you uh, by minute. And if you're there charging at higher speeds, like oh, I think it's over 60 kilowatts, they'll charge you one rate. But then as the battery fills up, it slows down and doesn't charge as fast. And they charge you at like half the rate uh, for the minutes after that. And that's because in some states, they're not allowed to charge. Like only electric companies are, are allowed to charge for electricity by the kilowatt hour, so Tesla just kind of charges like parking, and uh, so it, it depends greatly. There, there's probably like there's uh, one site you can go to to check out how much it might cost for you is to go to a betterrootplanner.com, and there you can put in like a sample car. It doesn't even have to be a Tesla; they have all different cars. But if you want to see the cost of supercharging, put in a car, select Model S, 3, X, or Y, put in a sample route, so you're driving from California to Colorado, and it will tell you where to charge along the way, and it will tell you how much it will, how long to stop at each supercharger, and then how much it will estimate it would cost you to charge at each one of those. But typically, it's going to cost a lot less than what it would be on a gas vehicle. Yep. So and the cool thing too is a lot of different the, prices. But the other thing we didn't add in to that is typically most owners, if you own a house and stuff, you don't need to supercharge. Most of the, your charging is probably going to be at home. And since we have solar installed, we don't really ever pay anything. We pay for the solar, and now we don't really care how much it costs. We just charge whenever. And so typically, the only time we use supercharging is if we are traveling on a road trip or if we're meeting some friends at an event or something, uh, you know, at the other side of town. Yeah, but another thing to really look at also is some stores have free charging for several hours they're not going to be super chargers um but um what was the um one that we recently saw where there's one that had like four hours of free uh super charging out where you were uh, uh in, on the other side of town signing paperwork uh no it was that was not a supercharger but yeah that was yeah, yeah they don't yeah, have free super chargers like charge they have point, free chargers there's all different charging networks but there was charge point and I parked at this building I didn't know they had charging I didn't need it because you know I was charged up when I left the house and it was only 20 miles away and I can probably go 330 miles in my car but basically I saw right outside the window when I was uh, signing some documents that they had like free charging for like four hours there and a lot of businesses and a lot of employers have that so you don't always need to supercharge typically the most the way that supercharging is most useful is when you're on a road trip yeah you can definitely use it around town but it's it's you're going to be waiting so it, it's nice if you are going to be supercharging around town hopefully there's a business or something that if you know, can go and and uh, get a bite to eat or, or go shopping while you're supercharging my friends that live kind of like in apartment complexes or high rises downtown i've actually noticed that they tend to go shopping at places that have those like four hours of free charging yep. and so they'll go get their groceries at that grocery store or whatever shopping center is right there that offers that so that they can get a charge while getting their shopping and stuff done yeah, which and is that's, perfect that's something too like when i drive to like nebraska and visit my father there's like a high v grocery store that also has restaurants and stuff there and i'll pick up my dad my stepdom and we'll, we'll go over there i can plug in my car you know get a get a few miles while i'm there and then i don't have to worry about using uh, you know my my father's you know bumping up his electric bill exactly um real quick there was a super chat from dnn oh, nation yeah, thank you again. very much for the five dollar super chat said um my name is darion 
Hopefully I pronounced that right. And I have the Model Y. I was wanting to know if the Model X is worth the money. So we actually had a Model X and I loved it. Yeah. The only downside is, is literally like a week or so after we picked it up, they came out with the Raven model. Now, if it was the Raven model we would have received, I would still have that X yeah. today. I love the X. Yeah. And definitely, Over the Y, yeah. it has some key, key things. You get yeah. the air suspension. It does have a bigger cabin. Uh, it does have um, like the HEPA filter, the, the bioweapon filter. defense mode. Yep. It's got more seating. So you, right now it's got yeah. more seating. It's got seating for up to six or seven people. And it does have like two air, air conditioning compressors. So it's going to have better cooling uh, versus like the Y. But the Y is a smaller vehicle. And yeah. we still lo definitely love the Y. And if you only have like four or, or fewer people, then the Y is probably still going to be good for you. But the X, this is going to give you a lot more room. It also has some other interesting features. It's got the crazy Falcon wing doors. Yep. Um, the front passenger and driver door both can open through the screen and then close through the screen. Automatically, yeah. So it has some other comforts. The great windshield. Um, like Oh, yeah, very, the windshield's you know, amazing. It's like a helicopter pilot. Also, it has the ability t to tow more. So I think it yes. can tow like 5,000 pounds. Uh, versus what was it, thirty five hundred or twenty five hundred? I think it's thirty five on, on the Y. So it can definitely tow more. So if you have a, a bigger trailer, then the X would be the way to go. That being said, though, I have a Y and I love it. Yeah. So and so the thing is, since the X is bigger, it's going to be less energy efficient, and so the range, uh, you know, you're you're going to use more energy per mile you on the X versus the Y. But both of them are great vehicles. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to owning either one. Um, but yeah, the X is more expensive. So that is one thing to always consider. Yep. Um, we got another super chat. Uh, hasn't come through yet. Notification from, should from be Lex, and I'm guessing, right I'm guessing here he's in, in just Canada. a second. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Um, said, thank you for the six ninety nine. dollars um, Said, what do you think about the election? So we're, we're not going to try to get too political because it's not really what we do on this channel. But I will say um, Joe Biden, in terms of... Like clean, clean energy, clean energy yes. is a much bigger fan. I would be very surprised if we didn't see some kind of new EV incentive announcement, um, stuff like that. He, Joe Biden did say that if you know if he was elected, he would bring that back. And for those you don't know, with Tesla and it, basically any electric car manufacturer, they, the federal government has like a, up to a seventy five hundred dollar <clears throat> tax credit, yeah. and that's something that Tesla and GM can no longer get because they they reach the cap. And once they reach that, was it like two hundred thousand vehicles, yeah. then it kind of started phasing out. But before then, it was $7,500, and, and it's a great way to save money on a car. It's definitely an incentive to buy a car, and Biden has said that he would be bringing that back. So that's definitely a way to stimulate uh, the economy and uh, to clean the environment, you know, by, by having uh, neutral, you know, emissions cars. But also, those jobs that Tesla has are here in the U.S. That's another mainly. thing is, is that and it's so, been said that maybe yeah. if they do bring it back, it would be for American vehicles. So that's a way definitely to stimulate uh, American production, and Tesla is right here in the U.S. Yeah. Um, but that's that's kind of where we'll go with that. Um, now, I see some people saying, hopefully it's retroactive. Oh, my God, that would be awesome. That would be great. Um, but if not... I doubt. I would be... Super surprised. Yeah. Um, I, and then let's see. That would, be, that would be nice, but I don't think. Someone so. said, Sean said, I'd rather see no oil or EV subsidies. You know what? I'm fine with that too. That's, um, that's the thing is, is that I'm oils, totally fine with oil that. still gets huge subsidies. Yeah. If people really had to pay the full price, it would cost several times as much as it is now. So that's one thing. If, if they're not going to give any subsidies to EVs, then get rid of all the EVs, or excuse me, the gas subsidies. Yeah. I'm completely on board with removing all the subsidies to be 100% honest I'm fine with that too uh, probably not a popular opinion but if we're going to make the playing field level that's that's a good way to do it I guess um, but yeah and then Rob Stack actually said now you know floated the idea this week that Tesla would stop selling cars when the robo taxi fleet gets into full swing because cars would become extremely expensive um, what are your thoughts I think you know, that's I don't really way out yeah <laughs> I mean, you never really know, but I don't think they would necessarily completely stop selling. I think there won't be as much incentive. Yeah. Or, you know, if you, there is a perfect robo taxi car, then you don't need to have like two or three vehicles for a family because exactly. you could have one vehicle, have it take somebody, drop, and then they could drive back, pick up. But the next what if every if vehicle Tesla built 
went right into their robo taxi fleet and they didn't sell any to the private market. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it could happen. I think that's still way out there. Yeah, I mean, 100%. even if they do come out with robo taxis and, and perfect full self driving, I think it's still, you know, 20 more or more years out. They're going to be, you know, other companies are going to be selling cars for a while. But I can definitely see that eventually. You won't need to own a car. Nobody would need to own a car. Yeah. You would just basically, you know, call a cyber taxi and come pick you up. Kind of like in Minority Report and these other movies where you just order a car and picks you up, takes you and drops you off. Exactly. Um, let's see. Um, where was I before the super chats? Thank you again, though, for the super chats. Really appreciate that. Um, trying not to skip any questions. Um, that's another thing about the robot taxis oh, is, yeah. is that that's robo-taxi. not really going to work. Somebody says, like, in rural areas, you're not going to be, like, 20 miles out or 50 miles or 100 miles out and call a car and wait for it. So you're definitely going to need some vehicles like the cyber truck or some other trucks. Uh, there's still going to be private vehicles out there. But definitely yeah. in cities, I think a lot of people, especially, like, New York, some of the big cities where taxis are more common, definitely be able to use robot taxis. Yeah, uh, kind of on that, Yogi B said, do you guys believe any model with FSD bought now will be worth more in the future because of robo taxi capability? If you plan on putting your car on that robo taxi fleet, I definitely think so. Because you can earn money that way. But if you're not going to put it on that fleet, I don't really know how much it would be worth more to you. Yeah, and it remains to be seen too, like if the cars do have yeah. all the functionality. Because right now, the full self-driving beta is doing a good job for you know the first releases. But uh, the driver is still have to be there and be vigilant and watching over and i don't think they can expect at the current level to just roll it out to somebody who doesn't know how to drive or doesn't know how to drive a tesla and so they're gonna it's gonna be have to be perfect before they can uh roll that out and there's gonna be need to be a uh, better driver monitoring system which tesla only has like the steering wheel uh, you have to hold the steering wheel is about all they're doing so far so they're gonna have to really uh increase it uh, before they're going to be able to turn on the robo taxi network. Yep. Uh, I'm going to fly through some of these questions real quick. Uh, Seema said, Do you think that Tesla Snake Charger could be programmed to open a bottle of Tesla tequila? Why not? <laughs> um, Just be very carefully, though. Remember, yeah. don't go side to side. Tim side said, Got a 2021 <laughs> model Y one week old. How do I turn on the heat pump to heat the battery? It's automatic. You don't. Yeah. It's all automatic. The car will use the heat pump when it needs to. Um, and, and my suggestion, you... though, is if you are in a cold location, preheat your vehicle. Ideally, when it's plugged in, so it doesn't use your battery power, and that will make sure that when you start driving, your battery is preheated, so that you don't have any loss of regen or anything like that. And you can direct do that directly from the app. You don't need to go out to the car. You can just turn it on the climate control, and you'll see like defrost and stuff. You can you can do all that from the app. Yep. Um, Aaron had a question about issues with Tesla Cam, where if the car is park the car shows that the drive is not compatible but as soon as you put it into drive it goes away i have not now That's this sounds question. stupid <laughs> and i assume you already did it um but maybe a double scroll wheel reset to see if that helps any if not uh drop in the comment section what uh version you're on curious yeah, about we that. haven't seen that um let's see chelsea said if tesla gets to the close to the end of the quarter and needs those sales they might add in some sales levers um, yeah, and we saw that you know yeah, they did the they price drop that, recently. Yeah. They really dropped the price of the Model S, and you know who knows what other features they're going to be coming out with. They're definitely always increasing things. They've added new func- new features for the Model Three recently. I'm sure we're going to see some of those on the Model Y too. Oh, and On actually uh, noted that PlugShare has search filters, so you can display and find only free chargers. Oh, yeah, that's oh, nice. Yeah, that is. I did not. No, that, I don't that's think awesome. I've used that. I've used all their other filters, but I did not know there was only a free one. So that could help you eliminate the ones you don't want to pay for yep um but also the nice thing is that those locations that do offer free charging they assume that you're going to go spend money in there which most of the time you do um so that's how they're able to do that and, and yeah exactly and another thing too t- their tesla has this whole destination charging network so if you're driving on a road trip across the country or even going to some cities nearby there's like home they're kind of like the same as a wall connector a tesla wall connector but they're installed at businesses and hotels and you could if you're going to be staying there overnight you don't need a supercharge you can basically in a way to save money on a road trip instead of supercharging go to a hotel that offers free charging at night. and we've done that several times and, yeah and then you wake and you know you just charge your car up overnight and then you're ready to go with a full battery the next morning the one thing though is if i do use a hotel with a destination charger i always try to make it known like hey Thanks for offering that. That's yep. why I chose you. So they, they know like it is getting them business. 
Um, let's see, use 16 oxygen, said new Tesla USB memory card with the Model 3. Yes. Will that roll out to the rest of the fleet? Unknown. But currently, the new Model 3s are coming with, I believe it's like a 16. Is that all of them? Like even in the United States yeah. as well? Because I saw they They're had a China to. first. They're going to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's not a giant as a memory card. So just keep yeah, that Yeah, definitely you can buy a cheap one yourself. Or what we do is we have the Samsung SSDs. T5 SSG, SSD, and it holds like, is it, is it the 512 uh, gigabytes? Either way. So yeah. they definitely hold a lot more uh, safe clips on those. Yep. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ken, great observation. Does anyone realize that a cat's nose looks like a Tesla logo? <laughs> I assume you have a cat and it is staring at you right now. Um, let's see. Uh, bah, 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 bah. We already talked about that. EV subsidies covered it. Um, yeah, see, uh, see uh, Rob Stack's asking, if you trade in a Tesla on another Tesla, do you lose your referral supercharger miles you shouldn't no and i don't think so because those stay with your account they should be on your account and especially if you are trading it in immediately i don't think those i've never lost away. any of mine and i've flipped cars a lot yeah so i don't think you have to worry about that it's not huge hopefully but yeah definitely something you wouldn't want to lose if you don't have to yep now somebody asked i can't find it i saw it earlier um about the cyber truck and whether or not if you modify what model whether it be single dual or tri-motor will that change your fsd price now i i hate to say it i'm 99 mm, percent sure it will <laughs> um, because previously when i've had reservations with tesla and they changed the price yeah. structure but i wanted to change the model to do that i had to base they basically like cancel all that and make a new one new order. and gets you into that new pricing schedule and if you look at tesla right now to order a cyber truck Full self driving is ten thousand yeah. dollars. So I bet so we bump it up. If you change your build, I'm willing to bet it's going to change the FSD price. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm not going to be the one to test it on my account, though. I'm not going to lie, not me. Uh, but if you do it, let me know, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Phil said, "When do you think Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive will be announced?" That might be one thing we'll be seeing next month. That might be the one more thing, or. or or yep. first quarter of next year. We'll see. Yeah. That might be, you know, the, the demand the lever for first quarter. So. Yep. And to follow up on the Cybertruck, someone was asking about other changes. Because Elon did not tweet like a week or so back that they have tweaked some of the design. Yep. And they're going to be releasing those uh, changes. So we'll see those shortly. Yeah. We don't um, know what they are yet. We have no idea. And, I mean, to be honest, I bet it's all, like, pretty small stuff. Hopefully the back glass kind of right here that... So here you have that cover that weeds down and rolls down to like right here. But a lot of people were wanting that back glass right here to drop so that with the cover, you can have heat and AC and air and everything in the back. Yeah, and not on the side, but on the back, you know, if yeah, you're yeah, standing yeah. looking There's like at the, cross at the section. Bed. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that is something they could add. That's something I would but, really but say, like. But I'll say if they don't have the glass lowering, it might be better or cheaper to just have some AC or heating vents going or, into the bed rather than the glass lowering why don't they just have a little window like in most trucks oh, like an old-fashioned just window you go like that yeah i don't <laughs> i mean it allows you to get air and everything into the back yeah i'm fine with that i yeah. don't really so care. they're gonna do something to try to accommodate those people because they did with, with the tunnel cover that covers that it'll make a great camping vehicle so it'd be nice if, if it was yeah. like heated or cooled back there that's probably one of the biggest things i've seen people suggest that i'm like yes i want that so hopefully that'd be really nice um, somebody say trade in clunkers for EVs would be awesome. I mean, basically, yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, Tesla, not Tesla, but in Colorado, they used to actually have a state tax credit for used cars. And so it was an easy way to, uh, you could actually get some really cheap EVs because they could be bought out of state and you can get really cheap, like Nissan Leafs and, and stuff. But unfortunately it's no longer available for used cars, just on new ones. Yep. Um, let's see. So Apple Review said, how much bedroom does the Cybertruck have? Do they have the measurements? Um, bedroom, bedroom. It's pretty big. But we, when we saw it, it was... Uh, Vault length is six and a half feet. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty pretty big. It's, it's, it's going to be a big truck. It's a it big really vehicle. Is. We, you know, it's, it's not going to fit yeah. in everybody gar everybody's garage. It's a big truck. Yeah. But Elon did say that they're going to be coming up with a smaller one, you know, in a couple of years. So if this one doesn't fit for you, they'll have another one to choose. Yep. Um, let's see. 
uh, Ask Ask Shay um, said, "Will there be a Model Y standard range?" Based on what Elon has said, doubtful. doubtful. Because that would probably cut into the range too much to really get them past that minimum of two fifty that he really wants. It'd be um, interesting if so. they ever do like what they did with the three, because for one for a while they offered that medium range one, yes. which was a way to bring the price down a little bit and still have uh, you know a little more miles than the the standard range. Yup. Um, Sean said, "Does the Y heat the battery when navigating to a supercharger like the SNX do?" Yup. Yep. And it'll actually same with Model Three. It'll pop up on the center screen saying uh, "preconditioning battery." Um, so that is awesome if you are in a cold destination and you are going to supercharge, make sure you're navigating to it so that by the time you get there, your car is at an optimal battery temperature. Otherwise your supercharging is gonna start really low and it's not gonna necessarily peak as high as it could. And another little tip too, for those of you in cold climates, this might be your first winter, is we too, we like to charge our cars so that they charge in the morning and they're finished charging right about the time we would leave to go to work. Yep. And so that way, that battery is warmer and that allows you to have a little more regen uh, on your drive. If, if you charge the car like at 5 p.m. or something when you first get home, then the battery's gonna cool down overnight. And then when you leave in the morning, you, you might have a, a little different driving experience. You're not gonna be have, having an efficient of a drive just because the battery's gonna be colder. Yeah. It's definitely like a pro tip. And we've actually been, getting a ton of emails about cold weather driving. So we'll probably have a cold weather episode coming up very, very soon. Yeah. Um, and it's that time of the year. Yep. Yeah. And I saw Yogi, speaking of that cold, then you have snow. And I see Yogi B is asking about if you have to clean snow and frost and stuff off the cameras. Well, you will get a message if you're driving, if there's something that obstructs it. And we've got, we've seen it where it says like the, you know, the left repeater camera or the side pillar camera is locked and it doesn't really tell you to pull over but that's something that we would do if we are you know able to pull over safely yeah and then once you, and sometimes though you will get a message saying you know autopilot's unavailable for the rest of your drive but typically if you pull over we'll take an exit and we we don't see that i've seen it like twice in like four years but we would just pull over and see if there are any obstructions sometimes it's the sun it depends you know always changing but then we would get back on the road work fine Yep. Uh, Pierre said, finally got tint. Was told Tesla can only use ceramic tint. Do you know if that is true? 100% false. false. They were just um, trying to see the good stuff. Either case, <laughs> I like the higher performance to block the heat. So definitely, yes. yes. Ceramic tint is definitely better in terms of heat rejection from what I have seen. That being said, I put ceramic tint on my cars. But you can use dye tint on Teslas. That Yeah, that's kind of shady. But yeah. Pretty much, I would go with ceramic if I were you. Um, Jason uh, confirmed it is a 64 gig USB drive in the glove box. Said, I wonder if we can no, still fit an SSD good. in the glove box. So should, yeah. from the pictures I've seen, you can just unplug that and just get a USB to USB-C. Uh, at least that's what the Samsung... Your, your SSD drive sh should come with those cables. Yeah, exactly. It, it comes with both cables. These are yep. just did. So it came with a shorty and it came with a long... Or it came with a long one. But, but it I should think it work just fine. C, you know, USB C. Yeah. yeah. But I see Terry Thompson was asking about what's the etiquette for when you're charging at a hotel, and so we have a couple different tips on that. One is if there is a supercharger, sometimes a lot of times on the road, superchargers are located at the hotel. So like when we're driving through Utah, there's one that we just choose that one for the night. And we'll basically what we'll do is we'll plug in the car as soon as we get to the hotel, go check into the hotel, take our bags up to the room, and typically by the time we're we you know unpacked Settled our bags, in. Whatever, the car's yeah. done. And so we'll go ahead and move the car. You don't want to leave it there because you could get uh, idle charges and you don't want to have to pay for that. And you don't want to block the chargers from other drivers. So we'll move the car. Sometimes we'll, you know, we'll basically charge it up to about 90%. So we'll be ready to go in the morning. But typically in the morning, we'll go ahead and if the space is available, we'll go and plug the car back in for a few minutes and try to top it off while we're getting like the free breakfast or something like that. And then exactly. we, you can have a full charge with a supercharger. Now, if we do use a destination charge instead of a supercharger, we will go ahead and plug in, and then those typically take longer, so it might charge all night long. But what we'll do is we'll put like a note either on the charging port or on the driver's side or on the dashboard that basically has our phone number, and it will allow people to say, hey, we're charging, we need this because we're on a road trip, but if you need to charge and all the other ones are full, give us a call, here's our cell phone number, and we'll come down and we'll move the car if, we're full, if we have enough charge. And one thing is if you are uncomfortable leaving your phone number in your car, 
leave it with the front desk. Exactly. And yeah. you can tell them if someone comes in and needs the charger in case of emergency, feel free to call me. I just don't want this out for everybody to see because I hate to say it, everybody knows my cars. And yeah. I don't want my phone number floating exactly, around. Yeah. Another thing you can do is create little like throwaway phone numbers, Google Voice or whatever. But normally I just leave everything with the front desk and say, if someone needs this, please just call me and I'll move. But we've definitely used the destination chargers a lot, like in South Dakota, in Utah, whenever on road trips, it's always nice to have those hotels. But also even when we go up to like the mountains here in Colorado, uh, we, we were able to get one of the casinos to put in, I, don't, I think they put in eight or, or 10 total ten, Tesla yeah. chargers. There's eight of them that are non-handicapped. And, you know, you're going to be up there uh, for a couple hours. It's nice to just top off your battery there. And it's it's with that free thing. But fortunately, the places we go up there, they don't, uh, you don't have to worry about blocking anybody because there's so many of them. Exactly. Um, and then let's see. Diego said, is 5G coming to Teslas? Do you, um, the 5G that is coming to Teslas, do you think it's for new models or can it be added to current cars? My guess would be... Only new models. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think it will be... Or only past a certain date, Bill. I think it's going to come with new models when they first roll it out, but I bet, just like with older cars, they're going to have an upgrade kit. Because yeah. originally when Tesla came out back in 2012, you know, it had 3G. Then after a few years, maybe it was 2015, I don't remember the exact year, they started offering 4G LTE. Swap. And uh, you could pay like $300 to have that modem, you know, the cell phone card swapped out. And uh, one-time fee and then you run 4G going forward. So I'm betting eventually Tesla will have that for this as well. So if your car currently only has 3G or, or 4G, you'll be able to swap it out. Whether it's gonna be 300 or $500, we don't know. But Tesla has actually lowered the price on that, I think, for some people. And if you do get the MCU upgrade on those older cars, it's like included because it's part of that MCU upgrade. Yeah. Um, Ready said, is dual pane windows retrofittable? Coming to a channel near you, yeah. we'll find out. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know if they're necessarily totally dual pane. That's, there's a lot of talk, dual pane or laminated. I think it's a more laminated, yeah. but either but, way, we're going to try it out. The only issue I have, though, is it's only the front two windows. They I'm haven't done it, yeah. it on the rear two, or they're not going to. I don't know, but it's not currently in production. Yeah. So I, to me, it doesn't make sense to just do the front two without doing the rear as well. Yeah. Um, so it, I guess we'll see. And also depending on the cost, I don't know if it's really worth it because some people saying it, it's not going to block out all noise. It'll basically make it a little quieter for cars that are passing you and a few other things, but it's not going to be totally quiet. Yeah. But, so it's like if, if you have money to burn, yeah, go ahead and do it. Or if you have a broken window from something else, and yeah, see if you can upgrade. But we'll, we'll get more information on that in the coming weeks. Yeah. Um, the only downside though is I've already tinted my current windows and you can't move your tint over, yeah. so then I have to pay for new tint. Um, my only worry is the laminated windows are gonna be a little thicker. So I don't know if maybe they m made like the window sweep have a little bit more room I, to account for that, that or cars, what? I saw some cars last week were having problems where it wasn't quite clearing it right. So yeah. I, those could just because those were the very first ones with those windows. Maybe they didn't use the compatible, you know, rubbers around them. Yep. Or maybe it's just, you know, they were need to be tweaked on the installation. But they're, they're always improving things. Yeah, so um, I am looking into it, though. So uh, one thing, fingers one thing crossed. I wish, so we're talking about tint. I still wish that Tesla had like <clears throat> electrochromatic windows. So hopefully when we see like the Roadster or the Plaid S, it would be nice to see if they had that. Yeah. So then you wouldn't need tint anymore. You could just, you know, turn a dial or change something on your screen and it, and it would uh, make them darker. Yeah. Um, let's see. One music story. Tesla said, I can confirm if you make any design changes, even the smallest, uh -huh. it will in fact change the FSD price. Yeah, that's what we've seen in to the hear past. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is what I have experienced as well. Um, Ready said, when can we expect the 4680 packs in Tesla cars? My guess, year and a half, two years maybe? Well, I thought that the, the Plaid S was supposed to have it next year. Oh yeah, so next year, but probably very limited. Yeah, probably starting out with just the Plaid S. But aren't, do you think they're going to be using that on the Cybertruck, which is supposed to start next year, too? Well, and what about the Roadster? Well, Elon yeah, did say that yeah. the Model Y or the version of the Y in Berlin would start off with those. So I'd see a limited production in the Model S for, like, the, the, the Plaid in the U.S. next year, and then Berlin maybe end of next year or beginning <laughs> of 2022. But what about Cybertruck? Batteries. Oh, well, yeah, I think they would have to have them on a Cybertruck as well. And yeah. that's supposed to start next year. Yeah, exactly. And so they're not Tesla gonna... better, 
Especially Better start ramping. The, especially for the tri-motor that's supposed to get like over 500 miles range, they're going to need to use those 4680 batteries. 100%. So they might have slow production for like, I'd say the you know first half, or the second half of next year, whenever they do start, it's probably going to be slow production. Production's going to be throttled by the yeah. batteries. I guarantee yeah. it. Samp up guarantee. Um, let's see. Um, ba 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 ba. Uh, Pablo said, "Q Cybertruck camping and sleepover videos. I can't wait. Oh yeah, Definitely. I have so many fun ideas and plans for that car. Some roads. We've got some can't special wait. road trips. Road trips plan. But yeah, gotta wait for it to get here. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Nine Flower said, "Are we gonna see a price drop on Model Three in Q1?" I mean, hmm. I I can never read Tesla, but I think they've already done quite a lot of price drops lately. I would be surprised if it came as early as Q1 yeah. for and, anything yet. And that's what I'm wondering, too, is if they do bring back the EV credit, are they going to bump the price up or are they going to keep the price the same and it'll yeah. just make it that much more affordable? Or are they going to have just like more options so you can still get the car at cheap but price, you get some other but stuff. there's a lot more choices where yeah. you can spend an extra you know, five or $10,000 but then get that back on the tax credit. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if, if that comes back, but we're hoping that comes back. Yeah. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. I see, Where I see are we? Uh, Raghav is saying that he okay. did a road trip recently in his Y and he got 289 watt hours per mile on his, on his Model Y. Do you know what our average is? I, I don't know. I haven't looked at it recently. We haven't done a lot of really long Do you have a performance trip. though? Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, the performance is going to be a little worse. He didn't say yeah. it just says Model Y, so I don't know. But the performance is going to be a little higher. I think we're probably closer to like 300 or something on that. But also, our road trips in the mountains are going to be a little higher, I think. We haven't taken the Y to Kansas or Nebraska, where it's a lot flatter. I don't no. think... You took I think it to I, California, I, though, didn't you? Or Yeah, I took it out to California. Yeah. I think I'm up to, like, 5,000 miles. Let me look real quick. Oh, you're over that. I think you're over, like, oh. almost 7,000, aren't you? Oh, my God. I'm at 6,100. 6,000, 6, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, because you drove, you drove it out to California to get the, the Alcantara headliner. And the and, tent and, and the, the wrap. And all that yeah, stuff. On the wrap, yeah. Yep. Uh, I have a, some new rap ideas too. What's being discussed? So I can't wait to show you that. Um, let's see. Jason said, "I wonder what Jetta is going to do. Looks like all the positions of the USB ports in the center console position closer to the cup holder. Hopefully, Abstract Ocean gets new stuff." Um, so, yes. Um, I don't know what I can and can't say. I've been talking to Abstract Ocean. We have a ton of cool ideas and cool stuff. Yes. Yes. I will say that. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Matthew said, is the auto dimming mirrors retrofittable? Still working on that one? Hopefully, because I really want those badly. Yeah, it just depends on if the wiring's in there. You, yep. would, you would hope it was, because especially on the three, because the three had them, then it went away for a while, and then it came back. So you'd think that the wiring would, would probably be standard. So hopefully it's going to be the same in the Y, and that it will it will work yo um rob said have you or anybody in chat received the model y jetta hubs i ordered mine may 3rd and still don't have it so i do have mine i was actually working with them on the r d side of that and doing a bunch of testing for them and so i have one of the finished ones now that being said if you ordered on may 3rd i think they posted on twitter that you should have it already i would reach out to them and just confirm that though uh, looks um, like uh, we got another so yeah. chat from Lat um, Lex, I believe, in Canada. Let me scroll down. A huge thank you, Thanks Lex, again. for the super chat. Said, order to Cybertruck. Do you think self-driving will be more money for me when I get it? <sighs> it's only gone up. So when FSD was first announced, you had to get enhanced autopilot and FSD, which was, what, 7000 6000 uh, it was, was, was $5,000 for enhanced autopilot and then $3,000 for the full self-driving. But then yeah. they later lowered the price so you could get to it for $1,000 or like $2,000. $2,000. Yeah. So it started at $7,000 and now it's $10,000. I think the issue here is going to be at what point can Tesla raise the price of FSD to make it worthwhile for people to still buy? Yeah. It, the kids, they can't keep raising it. It's 10000 Yeah, starting to get, people are going to start, stop buying Or, it. okay. So the subscription. Here we go. Thing. Crazy idea. Are they just throwing the price of FSD up so because of uh, the money they've had to put into it in hopes that people will just go more towards a subscription model that they can charge a lot of money yeah, for? Yeah. I don't think so. I think they'd rather have the, the thing because. I would rather have it up front, yeah. but you never know. 
But yeah, it'll be interesting. That's another thing. So if he doesn't want to pay for all that, he could just do a subscription. But we don't yeah. know what that price will be, but we still think it's going to be a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah. So, but thank you so much, Lex, yeah. for the super chat. But we definitely do like full self driving. Yeah. Well, the at least the like navigate and autopilot, the current features we have, and we are looking forward to getting the, that city driving functionality whenever that software is released. Hopefully next month or early next year. Yeah. Um, let's see. Some other people commented about when they ordered the Jetta Hub and when it's supposed to ship. Uh, hopefully, they can start shipping them out sooner than later. It's kind of been a mess of a year for pretty much. Any kind of manufacturing, not going to lie. Um, but hopefully they can get those to you all sooner than later. Uh, Douglas did uh, add that he had the 19-inch Gemini with the covers on. Uh, my testing proved 6.5% improvement compared wow. to no Gemini covers. That's awesome. We haven't been able to test the Gemini on the Y yet, so it's something that... Yeah, kind of looking, I found kind of some sets, over. but people wanted like three to four thousand dollars. It's like for more them. than what the turbine, Uber turbines are selling for. It's like yeah, I was like, nah, nice. I'm good. <laughs> um, so I honestly don't know if I will be getting the Gemini's anymore for the Y. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, let's see. Um, uh, somebody said that they followed up with Jetta's customer service and they're starting to ship the third week of November. Hopefully, hopefully that is the case. Um, <laughs> uh, Terry said I measured the double pane windows in my 2020 Lexus and it's the same thickness as the windows in the Model Y interesting interesting I see Dirk, Dirk, Dirk. do you mind <laughs> telling me Terry how thick Dirk, Dirk. the double pane windows are or do you have the double pane windows in your Y Terry or were they single pane or non laminated I'm just curious to know what the thickness is of the laminated okay. I haven't actually heard that yet I see Durka Dirk is saying that they wish they hadn't paid for full self-driving because they paid for it $8,000 in the first car, but now they're on like their third car and they keep paying for it. That's something we've experienced as Can well. Can relate. We've spent a ton of money on full self-driving on, on various cars over the last four years. And uh, while we don't like subscriptions, we wish there was a way that if you bought it that the license would transfer over or that you would get a discount on it going forward. So it'll be interesting when Tesla does announce their uh, subscription, hopefully sometime ne early next year, they're going to have some deals for those of us who are repeatedly buying Teslas because we, we've spent enough on full self-driving that we could have bought an entire like performance Model Y if we hadn't bought full self-driving on all those other cars. Not necessarily proud of it, but it is what it is. Yeah, and, um, Kumar said, you look like some guy I've seen on TV or movies or been. some TV show. Oh. Mm -hmm. I we, don't know. We've been on YouTube a lot. Is someone else stealing my content and putting yeah. my face out there? If so, <laughs> Hopefully drop not. it in the yeah, comments if you do, below. If you do see us on commercials, uh, let us know because yeah. we did have a problem where someone was using our, our videos uh, without our permission. Basically, I should not have any commercials out there. And if I do... They're stealing my content, and please let me know so my attorney can go after them as well. Um, let's see. On said Eric has a lead foot, though. Mm. There's no proof of what? that. No. What? That cannot I be think proven. He's the one that, is he the one that saw you at... Oh, anyway. He is the one that saw me at the Taj courthouse. Mahal, Taj Mahal. So <laughs> maybe you know more than I think, On. <laughs> maybe, maybe he was just getting a driver's license renewal. Me at court? I don't know what y'all talk about. Um, Diego said no more secrets. I mean... <laughs> I'm trying not to, man. I'm trying not to. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Pablo said, have you done anything to your black trim on the Y to protect it from the colored foam and car washes? I don't take my car to uh, car washes yeah. like that, but um, there has been discoloration people have noticed on those. So what I actually did is when I had my car wrapped in everything out from, uh, in California from T-Sport line, I had them ceramic coat the black trim, and that has really helped protect it. So that would be my best thing is just get it ceramic coated. But I've heard the newer delivery ones, they've like made it so that they don't stain, like the black trim doesn't stain like it used to. Yeah, but there's there was some chemical, some cleaning. cleaning uh, yeah, there's a one from Chemical Guys. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Basically, because there's kind of like a rainbow effect uh, on the black trim for those who have like the earlier delivered model wise from, you know, March through... I don't know when, September of this year. Yeah. And, you know, if it gets wet or something, it kind of has a little rainbow, kind of like an oil effect. You can just rub your finger and it comes off, but you don't want to have to rub, you know, the whole thing. So the chemical guys and a few other companies yeah. have So this is what I've that used. Clean that off and present. Um, let me see. Where's my button? There we go. It's called the Speed Wipe. 
uh, from Chemical Guys. It's the cherry scent one, so it actually smells pretty dope. Uh, but you can get it on Amazon too. But I've used this, and that has helped remove those like stains on the black uh, trim. So you could try that out. Don't use anything abrasive though. Don't do that. That's bad. Bad, bad. Um, let's see. Uh, Peter said, with the Model Y weight capacity being only 826 pounds, what part do you think would need to be changed to increase the weight capacity? New shocks, struts, control arms. Tesla's lying. Straight up. Oh, yeah. We well, put I mean, over... That's for, that's okay, for that's, safety purposes. That's their safety. You know, Maybe that's what they for tested rec- for rating, EPA ratings and all that, that stuff. That being said, it I hold put well over 1,000 pounds of tile and everything in the back of a Model Y... And here we are today, just fine. Yeah, it worked fine. I mean, it, we could definitely see that it was lower. It you know, dropped it. To lower down. But once everything was removed, everything was back to normal. But I think normal, they had so. those limits just for, like, safety reasons. That's what they yeah. tested with, you know, the crash test and stuff like that. But it, it will hold more than that. Yeah. Um, Pablo also asked for car wash recommendations in Denver area. If you are going to go to an automated car wash, definitely try to choose something that's, like, brushless or touchless. Um I've always been afraid of those that actually touch your car, that they will scrape the crap out of your car. And that's kind of what I've seen. Now, sometimes if it's really bad, I will go to those like quarter places. I mean, they now have credit card swipes, but basically you can wash your car yourself in their little bays. And I'm not proud to say this, but I have used those brushes occasionally. But before I use those brushes, I take the high power hose and I spray out the brush as best I can to make sure there are no like rocks or anything from somebody that went like off roading with mud and everything uh, on that brush. But just be careful. That's all I'll say. Um, but there's some um, some places in Golden, Colorado that I've used a couple times that actually have heated water, which is really nice in the winter. That's really nice. Um, let's see here. I've seen a couple of people talking about, do you think Tesla will hit 450 next week? And I see, what is it, Matthew says that he's 17 and he owns two shares of Tesla. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's cool that so many companies let you buy like individual shares or even partial shares nowadays. And it, especially when the price is a little bit lower, I mean, it's still not cheap at 400 something dollars, but it was up to like almost $3,000 a few months ago before the split. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to get in and, and keep it and watch, the, watch it go up in your share split. Definitely good to get in when you can. Definitely. And as far as where the price is, I am long on Tesla. I, I one, don't short any stock because I only invest in companies that I think would do well. I don't really find the fun in shorting stock. It's not a popular opinion, but that's just mine. I don't really care. Somebody brought up. Um, But I also don't buy my Tesla to sell it in the short term. I want to keep it for the long term. So I'm holding out for a lot more than 450. Yeah. And and, and I was glad I got in way back in the day when it was like, I tried getting it when it was $45 a share, but then went up to 90. And I had those shares for a while. Sold them earlier this year, but now I've bought back a lot more uh, after the split or some of them before the split. And now I have five times as many shares. So it's definitely nice to watch it grow. And, you know, it's not nice to see it when it goes down, but I think things are going to go up again. And somebody did have a question about NEO too. It's amazing how much it's jumped up because didn't you buy NEO at like $3 a share? Like, uh, like My a year NEO ago, looking a little over real a year ago. good. He, so NEO is a Chinese car company and yeah. we've seen their cars. They look, they look nice. I actually checked them out in person we, in we China. We to go to the showrooms and stuff and, and we should do a video on that. Actually, someday. when I was there, they tried to get me to go drive one around but i was like i don't know the any law to drive one here in china but they're Um, they're they're nice looking cars that don't have like all the same features and range as the tesla but they were nice but you think you got in at like three or four dollars a share and i got in a real it's like 42 dollars or something yeah i just looked it 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 closed at 41.63 and it's down like a penny over the week uh weekend so um it is looking really good um but um EV companies in China are tend to be doing really well right now because of all the new things they're putting into effect. So that does kind of help the situation. Um, let's see. Diego said, after I got my ceramic coating, I was told I need to reapply it every year for 200 a year. Have you heard of this? No. Who do you, what brand of ceramic coating did you get? Do you know? If you can mention that in chat, that'd be great. Curious. I have the ceramic pro. What package did I get? Hold on, time out. Now I'm curious. Um, Cause I just had it done at T Sport Line and got like the great package. Cause I was like YOLO, why not? 
Um, Ceramic Pro. I did the... Da, 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 da. The silver package, is it? I think it's silver. And it's a five-year warranty, and it doesn't require, like, doing it every year or something. That's weird. I haven't heard of that. Um, let's somebody, see. Somebody notice the seats again. We get that every chat or so. Oh, yeah. So give a brief explanation. Explanation. Well, I am sitting in third-row seats from a Model X. Basically, you test, uh, Eric bought these off of eBay a couple years ago, basically they came from a couple different totaled Model X's and uh, he bought them and we just built some bases for them and now we kind of use them as couches when we're doing a live stream. And uh, yeah, they're pretty comfortable. Yeah. And they have functional seat belts and everything. You know, I've got the seat belt here. I'll typically have that on at the beginning of the chat. Still has the cup holders, which I also use, but uh, we have not ever hooked up the USB port. One of these days we might, but yeah, so yeah. We've been and the, and, busy and, and, filming. And, of course, people always notice the supercharger as well. Again, one of Eric's eBay purchases. Uh, it's a real supercharger. I love eBay. Yeah, it's a real supercharger v V2, so it has a thicker, heavier cable. It has all the parts on the inside, but since we don't have this, all the other equipment, like switching equipment and transformers, all that stuff, we can't actually use it as a supercharger, but it, it looks nice. Um, a lot of people have been donating previously uh, money to try to make it into a beverage dispenser, <laughs> and I am currently... Like in a, like research a, phase of that. Mm, mm, so I want to take that maybe and put it into a cup and have beverage dispensed. <laughs> That's the goal. I mean, if we're not going to be using it to plug cars in, yeah. you might as well you get always a beverage swap out dispenser. this cable, yeah, and get a different one. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah. So, in the works. Um, let's see. Um, somebody sold their Gemini's on eBay the last week. Didn't know you were looking for that. Um, so originally I was, don't, don't feel bad. I don't want anyone to feel Not bad. like active um, looking anymore. Originally yeah. I was, I'm still kind of toying with it. But the thing is, is when I really got into like the model threes, I, th what did we have? Seven sets of wheels and rims at one time. The garage was pretty full. Yeah. The garage was just full of wheels and tires and it got to be a little bit of a hot mess. So, yeah. so I'm trying to limit myself. And since I already have the T-Sport line TSTs for the summer, and I'm getting the T-Sport line... TSV, T I think. TS what? TSV, I think, which looks yep. like the... TSV uh, um, yeah. for the winter. I don't really need another set. And actually, I still have my 20-inch Uber turbines from the Model Y that I need to sell. Um, but thank you for the offer. Um, don't feel bad. It's okay. It's okay. And, and Originally, when I got the Y, though, I was really looking forward to getting some Geminis, but it, it's kind of fizzled. And a little bit of trivia for those of you guys who might have seen our videos back in, like, what was it, like, September or October of 2019, we brought back, like, the first set of Geminis from China for the Model 3. We basically uh, bought them from a guy off of China. He put his uh, his Model 3 up on jack stands. Do you guys and, want story time? Yeah. and he. I'll, he, I'll give you the story. It's pretty but, funny. But yeah, so we, we brought home those Model 3 uh, Gemini <laughs> wheels in our checked bags on the plane. And uh, we had those for a while on the Model yeah. 3. Yeah. Basically, we were in Shanghai on a cruise. That's where it went and left from. And I went a little bit early to kind of hang out with Jay in Shanghai, do some filming and everything. And then while there, I was, we were just driving around and we saw some Model 3s with those rims. And I was like, that would be dope if, like, we could find somebody. Because they just did not exist anywhere them. in the U.S. Nobody, exactly. Nobody had seen them in the U.S. And before. so while we were there, Jay managed to find somebody with a set. He helped out so so much. Holy crap! Yep. And Drove basically, it was kind of like a last minute ditch deal. Um, I paid him a ton of money for them, and he convinced him to put his car on jack stands until his custom yeah, wheels pictures. came in. Yeah, we, we should find the pictures um, in the video. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in me, the actual video I posted on I'll, YouTube I'll about it. I'll look for the picture it. while you're telling the story. Um, but basically, I convinced him to put his car on jack stands for like a month until his new rims came in so that I could buy his rims from him. And the funny thing is like it just like literally showed up to the airport yeah, right before our plane left, yeah. right before we had to go. So luckily, first class kind of saved it a little bit because they kind of hold planes for you. Um, but it was nice that we were able to get that. And I had to do them as checked bags and that cost a lot of money. It was kind of a mess. Would I do it again? You bet. 
I love those things. They it's look cool. amazing. The cool thing is, so we, so we brought those back on the plane, and we heard that a couple months later, Tesla actually showed like our video at one of their meetings and saying how, or they talked they talked about us in one of their meetings, yeah. and how these dedicated Tesla fans are buying wheels in China and bringing them back in their luggage, and and then a few months. later... I reached out to Tesla and was like, because a lot of people came and reached out to me and was like, hey, can you get me you some sets from US. China? Yeah. Um, and I was like, unfortunately, not easily, and so. I reached out to some people at Tesla and was like, why don't you start selling these? Because people want them. And then, yeah, they kind of A few months later, they, example, they did so. bring them to U.S. And then they made them, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a great call. People love them. I think they look great. Um, next up, here we go. Story time. That was it. Um, Darren's been buying off eBay since 1997. I've been around since the beginning of, well, yeah, of eBay, crap. yes. I've spent a lot of money and on PayPal. eBay, I was I like, do love, I was one of I do the eBay. first when they were doing like beta testing of PayPal. Little oh, yeah, did I know that Elon Musk, was, you know, yeah. nobody knew who Elon Musk was back in the early 90s or mid 90s. But yeah, I wish I would have known more of it back then. Yeah. Um, uh, George said, uh, would you get solar roof if you had to replace your roof or would you just go for a standard roof? Um, would you rather get solar panels or solar roof? Why? There's pros and cons. Yeah. Solar roof is going to be a lot more money, but is also more integrated. It looks a little better. But solar roof to expand your system is not going to be easy or cheap. Whereas if you get solar panels like we did and you want to expand and get a bigger system, it's very easy. Um, so to be honest, I would love to have a solar roof. I just wouldn't want to pay like the double the price probably, do you think, for solar roof? It, uh, when we were doing the pricing a uh, year and a half, two years ago, it would have cost twice as much and it just wasn't, uh, uh, didn't make sense for us because our roof doesn't need to be replaced. It would look nice, but it would have, the return on investment would have taken like 30 years. Whereas by getting panels and they were a lot cheaper, we or it's going to be like five, six years. So it's, it's, it was more affordable and better yeah. deal for us to get panels. Yeah. Um, I saw your email, Peter, about the uh, Porsche. Uh, I've thought about it. Only thing is right now I'm trying not to travel unless I absolutely have to. Um, but actually, I was originally supposed to get a Porsche Taycan, and then they just kind of fizzled out on me. So it is kind of what it is. I would still love to race one and compare it to how I've raced in the Model 3. That would be pretty dope. Um, so I'll definitely be following up with the Porsche as soon as... Did um, I have a chance to, if, and we can travel a little bit. Can What's you see up? if the link that I pasted, did it, the link go in there? So basically I found the wheels link. Oh, I just clicked out of yeah. my live stream. Oh, oh, oh no. Whoops. Are we still here? Mm. Hey, we're still here. Okay. So anyways, Eric, don't click on the link. Everybody else, after the live stream, check if you're interested in the Gemini story, that's the video. It I says, found. oops, something went wrong if I open it in a new window. Yeah, it worked for me, but um, maybe it's, um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it works. Anyways, if you just go back through our videos, it was it was, yeah. uh, it was last year, maybe like October of 2019, uh, and you can see Eric sitting in front of the Model Three with the Gemini wheels, and it has the story of how we brought him back. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think we've been go we've been live for like almost an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I did not eat dinner yet, so I'm getting a little hungry, a little hangry. Um, Wait, so there, I think, what? Was there another super chat or not? No. no. Oh, it was just an, I was subscribing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and call this week here. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, again, though, huge thank you to everyone who has used our referral code, uh, the super chats, uh, any of that. And huge thank you to everyone just hanging out. Um, some pretty fun stuff coming up this week. Um, we've got... If I can get all the videos edited, there should be like two or three videos. Uh, I'm pretty excited about some of them. They're pretty pretty exciting. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm thanks, trying not to leak too much. Yeah, but thanks everybody for the I questions, can, and say. thanks too for everybody who yeah. helped out answering some of the questions and providing your own stories. Yeah, exactly. Um, but huge thanks to everyone for hanging out. Again, though, also our channel sponsor is Abstract Ocean. So huge thank you to them if you are going to accessorize your model S X Y or three, uh, definitely go ahead and check them out. I'll link down below and using code Tesla inventory will get you 15% off of your first purchase. They have so many fun things and fun things coming for the new Model 3 center console. I said too much, but I couldn't help it. That was for you, Diego. Um, but yeah, we will see you all next week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. Bye.